A very good evening to all of you. I, Dr. Komal Lalwani, on behalf of Nationwide Quality of Care Network, welcome you all to today's author speak session by Dr. Prabha Ranjan. Dr. Prabha Ranjan is going to talk about the paper on pre-identification of high-risk pregnancies to improve triaging at the time of admission and management of complications in labor room. This is a quality improvement initiative by this. Now, I would like to call upon Dr. Vikram Datta to welcome our author of today. Dr. Vikram Datta is a director professor at Department of Neonatology, Lady Harding Medical College, India. He is a president of Nationwide Quality of Care Network and he was the vice president of National Neonatology Forum, India. He is a guest editor of PMG Open Quality South Asia edition. He is a member of editorial board at International General for Quality in Healthcare Communication. He is expert at the International Society for Quality in Healthcare. He is lead at National Mentoring Group and Technical Resource Group lead for Sustainable Model for Lakshya by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, India. He is a member of QED, that is Quality, Equity and Dignity Working Group by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, India. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Komal. Uh, good evening, friends. In fact, uh, it is a wonderful opportunity to reconnect again after a hiatus. And I feel privileged to welcome all of you as uh, the guest editor of the British Medical Journal South Asia edition and welcome the author for today, Dr. Prabha Ranjan. Dr. Prabha Ranjan needs no introduction to NQCN family. And uh, she has been one of the founding members of NQCN and currently on also on the governing board and one of the most active gynecology colleagues in NQCN. She is currently placed at Bhagwan Mahavir Hospital as a consultant gynecologist. She is a member of the National Mentoring Group for Laksh and has traveled far and wide across India, sharing her skills to remotely manage a lot of district and sub-district facilities as they embark on their journey for quality improvement. She is national trainer for comprehensive abortion care, postpartum contraception, medical legal examination of survivors of sexual assault, and like I mentioned, on the governing board of NQCN. Her special areas of interest include high-risk pregnancy, on which she is going to be talking in greater detail today, minimally invasive surgery, and quality improvement initiatives for mother and child care. Dr. Prabha Ranjan uh, has been <clears throat> invited to be a part of the very distinguished and very innovative section which the communities of practice has planned. And this is to bring the authors who are publishing their manuscripts in the BMJ Open Quality South Asia edition face to face with the larger group of the teams in India and across Southeast Asia to hear firsthand because in, often in the manuscripts, we don't get to, you know, hear the nitty gritties, the challenges and their, you know, uh, own experiences, how they develop the manuscript, what triggered them, you know, to take up that topic and what was their journey right from starting this work to publishing. And I think the experience of bringing the authors directly face to face with the larger audience is happening for the first time on a sequential manner. I, I, I don't remember any BMJ, uh, you know, author or any international uh, journal, you know, bringing the uh, published uh, papers and their authors directly face to face interacting, uh, open to questions and suggestions uh, with the larger audience. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity. And before I invite Dr. Prabharanjan, let me just uh, remind all my friends in NQCN and the Southeast Asia Network that the third edition of BMJ is still open. And we are accepting uh, publication manuscripts to be peer reviewed. I request all of you to please submit uh, your uh, manuscripts. Go to the website of BMJ Open Quality and select from the drop down menu the South Asia edition. All manuscripts from India uh, which uh, qualify for publication will get a full 100% APC waiver. And this is fully supported by UNICEF India in collaboration with NQCN and BMJ UK. So over to you, Dr. Prabha, and uh, let's uh, embark on this journey of learning how your team uh, went ahead and identified the high-risk uh, deliveries in the labor room and saved lots of maternal as well as neonatal lives and picked up a lot of complications. A great learning, I think, which can save many lives in the fields for the people who have uh, assembled here today to listen to you and your team. Over to you, Dr. Prabha. 
thank you sir for the nice introduction and uh, at the outset outset i would like to thank the team nqc for inviting me in uh, one of its kind author speak session and giving me the opportunity to share my story with the, all the participants and uh, and i i would also like to take the opportunity before starting my presentation to thank and mention the contribution of all the people who were who are involved in the you know, conduction and publication of this uh, qi project and uh, so so a uh, very special thank to uh, dr vikram datta sir uh, for always uh, believing on me supporting me and guiding me in all my endeavors and uh, because of him only i think i am into the quality improvement uh, journey and uh, i am doing so much of activities in uh, all qi forums thank you sir and uh, dr mehtab sir who is the co author of uh, this um, article uh, who mentored us throughout the conduction and uh, publication of the, uh, this qi project and who 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 was always uh, there to support us whenever we required him and i would also like to mention the uh, contribution of our hod uh, dr shalja sinha ma'am uh, who always supported me in the begin in a in the beginning of this uh, qi project in conducting this qi project and she is the one of the pioneer uh, uh, playing the pioneer role in pivotal role in sustaining this qi project thank you dr shaljan and uh, i would i would also like to thank all the past and present uh, senior residents who were involved in the uh, conduction of this qi project and sustaining this qi project very successfully till date and uh, uh, i would mention the contribution of all my co-authors who uh, contributed in uh, writing the manuscript and revising the manuscript and uh, uh, lastly the uh, su uh, support from the nqc in office who gave us the opportunity to publish this uh, this uh, project in uh, one of the reputed bmj open quality south asia edition and also for waiving of the article publishing charges who is a quite a good amount for uh, publishing this um, article and again for giving giving me this opportunity to share my experience of conducting and writing this qi project with all the participants so uh, i am starting uh, sharing my screen my screen is visible yes ma'am it's visible okay thank you so again uh, shall i do it uh, on slide so yes okay so again uh, this qi project is very close to my heart because through this qi project only i took my first step in my journey of quality improvement and uh, this is the picture of uh, uh, 2018 in which we are getting uh, trained on poki at kalavati sharan children hospital uh, and the sari is there and uh, in this uh, training only we took this project to admit all hr uh, high risk pregnancy with pre identified high risk factor and i'm presenting this paper in uh, in the follow up session of this point of care quality improvement training so coming to the uh, coming to the project and how we uh, started this project and how we conducted this so the problem in our hospital was that our hospital is a 250 bedded hospital bhagwan mahavir hospital situated in pitampura northwest district of uh, delhi and uh, the labor room is uh, labor room works with one sr and one jr one post graduate uh, uh, doctor and one undergraduate undergraduate junior resident and two staff nurses at that time this was the strength of the labor room of bhagwan mahavir hospital and the um, senior resident from the labor room used to uh, the team of the labor room used to conduct all the services in the labor room including the monitoring observation conducting uh, vaginal deliveries and even the uh, conducting the cesarean section 
and to conduct cesarean section the senior resident has to go to the uh, has to leave the labor room and has to go to the ot to conduct the cesarean section and at that time the labor room used to be with only the undergraduate uh, junior resident and staff nurses so what we observed that at such situation the labor team uh, labor room team was failing to anticipate and manage complications timely and efficiently and uh, the high, uh, as the high risk pregnancies were not uh, pre identified they were not anticipating the complications so uh, as a team we decided to address this problem through uh, quality improvement methodology we form a team and analyze the problem uh, with process flow chart and fishbone analysis and started a qi project with an aim to admit pre identified high risk pregnancy in labor room from 0% to 80% in 3 months so indicators uh, what we tried to collect were the process uh, measures were the primary process measure was the percentage of pre identified high risk pregnancy admitted in labor room out of total high risk pregnancy deliveries we also collected data of types of high risk pregnancy identified as the secondary process measure and the primary outcome measure was the percentage decrease in major life threatening complications like antepartum hemorrhage postpartum hemorrhage severe preeclampsia eclampsia and we also collected data uh, about the maternal near miss and maternal death as the outcome measure the balancing indicator was the number of pregnant women referred out to tertiary care center we uh, center we wanted to look whether because of identifying uh, high risk pregnancy whether we are referring them uh, more and more or we are treating them in our hospital only so we took this uh, referral data as the balancing indicator to uh, conduct this uh, uh, to achieve our aim we conducted uh, uh, seven pdsa cycles in the span of seven months we started this project in the january 2019 and uh, the first pdsa cycle was uh, conducted in um, opd so we started from the opd what we tried in pdsa 1 we tried to identify the high risk pregnancy uh, in the, in their anc visits and uh, to write the uh, to give them a high risk pregnancy number in their anc card and no, to note the high risk number with diagnosis in all uh, uh, in the in a hrp register kept in all four opd rooms we have four opd rooms in our uh, opd premises in which anc patients are coming and uh, and we also uh, had an idea to explain the pregnant women and their relatives about associated high risk and the purpose of giving an hrp number so we tested the, this uh, idea uh, on uh, for two anc opd days and uh, what we studied that uh, the idea of giving high risk number was very good. We were identifying the high risk pregnancy and uh, also giving them a number and explaining them uh, why we are giving a number to their ANC card. Uh, we involved the, the patient and relatives about uh, their high risk pregnancy status. So it, this idea was the good, but it led to some problem also because of four OPD rooms we got duplication of numbers of high risk uh, pregnancy um, uh, duplication of high risk pregnancy number so we adapted this uh, change idea with partial modification and in second pdsa cycle we tried to test the idea that why not to give uh, why not to keep only one high risk pregnancy registered in one of the room and uh, to send all the patient to, who were identified as high risk pregnancy to get high risk number from that room only so we tested this idea for one anc opd day and what we observed that it uh, uh, that this led to the confusion among the patients uh, patients uh, they had to first uh, attend the opd room and then when they are identified as high risk pregnancy they had to go to another room to uh, get the hrp number and uh, the other consultants and other doctors from uh, they also felt that this will in, uh, this is increasing the visiting time of the patient so we again uh, 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 reviewed this change idea and decided to involve one of the nursing orderly from the opd into the process and conducted pdsa 3 
In this, we explained the new intervention to the nursing orderly and instructed her to help the high-risk pregnant woman to get HRP number from room number 212. And uh, this we tested for one NCOPD day. And what we observed in this uh, PDSA that getting an, uh, that nursing orderly was very comfortably escorting or guiding the high-risk pregnancy, uh, high-risk pregnant woman to get the HRP number. And uh, there was not much uh, problem. And uh, the time taking was also not uh, very high because the, all the four rooms are adjacent to each other. Two rooms on uh, one side, uh, only about you know, 30 to 40 steps away from each other. So this change idea worked well and we adopted this and we continued uh, giving high risk number to the uh, pregnant woman identified as HRP and sending them to room number two and two to get the HRP number. So these three PDSs we did in uh, OPD, ANC OPD. At the same time, we did a PDSA 4 in the labor room. In the labor room, we uh, plan that, uh, that doctor and staff nurses on duty will look for high risk number in their NC card and they will attend the uh, pregnant woman with the high risk number on priority and they will mark them as high risk pregnancy, pregnancy in their case seat. So that uh, uh, during the time of, uh, throughout the time of their stay in the hospital, they will be treated as high risk. And the staff needs to note down the high risk number in the admission and birth register to get an idea about the how much, uh, how many uh, patients of uh, high risk category were pre-identified. We did this uh, PDSA for one week in the labor room. And we studied that uh, this, uh, Pre-identification of high-risk pregnancies in OPD is helping the labor room team to identify them easily, to attend them easily, and uh, also to highlight uh, 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 highlight them as high-risk pregnancy in their case state and throughout their admission. And this was not uh, 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 taking any, this was not causing any difficulty or uh, hampering the normal routine work of the labor room team. In fact, they were feeling good. Key. Uh, they are getting the pre-identified high-risk pregnancy. And staff nurses were also comfortable in writing the uh, high-risk number in the admission register and birth register. So we uh, adopted this change idea as it is. And uh, we continued this process uh, and uh, started collecting weekly data for uh, number of uh, total delivery, number of high-risk delivery, and the number of high-risk pregnancy uh, admitted with pre-identification. Uh, pre so all these four PDSs were uh, in the month of January. So in the uh, during the data analysis of uh, uh, we what we observed that in the first four weeks we the uh, we couldn't achieve our aim of admitting high-risk pregnancy and ad, uh, with pre-identification. Uh, the target was more than 80% high risk pregnancy to be admitted with pre identified high risk factor. So, uh, we are not, uh, we have not achieved that uh, target till the end of the first four weeks. So, we evaluated our dat data and the causes why we were not uh, uh, able to admit all the high risk pregnancy with the pre identification. And on evaluation of data and uh, evaluating the things, we found that the common uh, for next four weeks in the month of February, we uh, continued uh, to, uh, to find out the reasons of non-identification of uh, high-risk pregnancy and not achieving our, our aim. So what we found that the common reasons for uh, 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 high-risk pregnancy not getting pre-identified and admitting and uh, into the being admitted into the labor room where first the unbooked uh, high risk pregnancy who were coming directly to the labor room for admission without being pre identified. Second one was the uh, late onset high risk pregnancies. Like uh, uh, they got admitted in the labor room with late onset high risk, like uh, premature rupture of membrane or uh, antepartum hemorrhage or late onset severe preeclampsia, eclampsia, like that. And another group was the missed uh, high-risk pregnancy in the OPD. We couldn't uh, uh, identify them as high-risk in the OPD. 
so these were the three categories uh, because of which we were not achieving our target so in pdsa 5 uh, what we decided uh, we decided to identify or uh, we decided to give a high risk number to the unidentified uh, high, high risk pregnant women who are uh, coming to the labor room and while history taking and examining them the duty doctor is finding uh, is uh, finding them as the high risk to again and uh, to uh, before uh, giving them admission to identify them as high risk pregnancy and um, we have also decided to uh, give them as the number as hrp lr high risk pregnancy lr and to one to whom we are giving a number in the OPD as HRP OPD to clear to demarcate them who were identified in the OPD and who were identified in the labor room. So before admission, we uh, we wanted to identify them at the uh, time of uh, uh, examining them in the casualty as high risk pregnancy, and similarly we wanted to uh, highlight them in the uh, in the process, uh, in the duration of uh, uh, hospital stay as high risk pregnancy, so we started ad identifying high risk pregnancy among unbooked pregnant women in the labor room casualty. Also, we did this in for one week in the labor room, and uh, uh, very um, and uh, in uh, this fifth ninth week of uh, our uh, project, we finally achieved our aim, and. Uh, since then, we are almost admitting 100% of high-risk pregnancy either identified in OPD or in the labor room casualty. So uh, in March, ninth, ninth week of the uh, ninth week of this uh, QI project and in the month of March, we achieved our aim and we continued the same process. Uh, we are continuing this process till date uh, as same and started uh, um, we continued the, uh, collecting the data as uh, we planned weekly data and analyze the data. So in the month of April, while analyzing the data uh, and uh, in one of the QI meeting, the labor room team uh, raised one of the question that we are getting so many uh, pre-identified high, uh, pre high-risk pregnancies. And we are highlighting so many pregnant women as high-risk pregnancy. So they, are, they were feeling that some of the high-risk pregnancies were not uh, that, uh, um, uh, that uh, were not falling into the category that they should be highlighted more. And giving, uh, so, uh, so what, was, what ha was happening that all were high-risk pregnancy. So the, the high-risk pregnancies who need to get utmost importance were um, it was buffering the idea of uh, highlighting high-risk pregnancy. So the team decided to categorize the pre-identified high-risk pregnancy into moderate and severe uh, categories so that the pregnancy or the high-risk pregnancy of severe category get much priority. And uh, like other high-risk pregnancy, like pregnancy with hypothyroidism or pregnancy with RS negative pregnancy or um, uh, like these presentation, they are also important, but they are not as important as the preg uh, as pregnancy with severe preeclampsia or uh, placenta previa. So we um, uh, in PDSS six we tried to categorize the high risk pregnancy into two categories: the moderate and severe high risk uh, category. We made a, we self developed a list of high risk, uh, high risk pregnancy in, uh, and categorized them into moderate and severe. And accordingly, we also uh, decided to color code the ANC card with red and yellow stickers. Red sticker for severe high risk pregnancy and yellow sticker for uh, moderate high risk pregnancy. And uh, we decided to give priority to high risk pregnancy with red stickers. So we procured uh, red and yellow stickers online and it was not very costly. It is not very costly. And uh, so we tried this uh, uh, change idea for two ANC OPD. And uh, this change idea worked very well initially. And initially it uh, raised some questions or inquiry about uh, why the 
some uh, in some of the NC card, these yellow stickers are uh, pasted or why we are putting these red or yellow stickers in the NC card of some of the women. But this led to the uh, uh, led to the uh, uh, bringing in uh, bringing up the awareness about high risk pregnancy. When we explained them why we are putting this red and yellow sticker to the uh, ANC card, this helped in bringing the awareness about high risk pregnancy fa factor among the pregnant women and their relatives. And they also got to know about oh, that okay they are in a high risk group and they have to be more vigilant and more prepared. So it helped in aware, uh, generating awareness about the uh, their high risk pregnancy status, and also the security guard and uh, the uh, nursing orderly. They also got to know about the high risk pregnancy, but just like just by looking at the ANC card, that okay. So yeah, with the red sticker, this pregnancy is a high risk pregnancy, and uh, we adopted this change idea uh, as it is and continued the process. And again, uh, in the following month on data analysis, we modified our data a little bit. We also uh, started collecting data, how much, how many pregnancy are with yellow stickers and how many uh, HRPs are with uh, red stickers. And we on anal analyzing the data, we got to know that uh, a high number of uh, high-risk pregnancies were falling into the category of uh, severe high-risk pregnancy. And also at uh, the same time, we were not getting the result of uh, what we wanted for our outcome process, that is the uh, reduction in the complication rate. So the team thought that why not to uh, redistribute the uh, existing human resources to the priority area that is labor room, who is where the uh, most of the uh, high-risk pregnancies are being attended and uh, taken care of. So in PDSA 7, we uh, post, uh, posted one of the SR from the OPD pool between 2 to 9 p.m. in labor room for conducting cesarean section and uh, other operative services and to help the uh, labor room team as and when required. And also we observed the effect of posting one additional SR in labor, labor room duty on other routine works. We did this uh, uh, We did this for one week and uh, uh, the results were very good because the labor room SR has not to leave the, had not, uh, not to leave the labor room for conducting scissor injection. She was totally focused on monitoring and uh, monitoring the laboring patient, con conducting and supervising the vaginal deliveries and following them in the postpartum period. And uh, the labor room team, the JR, JR and the staff nurse, they were also felt supported because of the presence of senior resident whole, uh, full time in the labor room. And uh, this and uh, the uh, other OPD services and other services of the department doesn't suffer uh, very much because of this shifting of human resources from OPD to labor room. So we adopted this idea, uh, this change idea, and uh, uh, still it is this practice is continued. Thus, we finally. Uh, So after conducting uh, uh, seven PDSA cycle, as we, uh, as I uh, told, we achieved our aim in the ninth week of uh, our QI uh, project, and we are sustaining this uh, uh, this uh, target or this aim till date. And this is the data till June 2021, but we are still continuing the same uh, process. Uh, very successfully and we are collecting the data and the, the data is same more than 80 percent almost 100 percent patients are pre-identified and uh, the outcome process uh, uh, the percentage decrease in major life-threatening complication in labor room initially uh, in 2018 the baseline data shows that the complication rate was around 9.43 uh, percent and uh, in the beginning of the first six months of the QI project, we didn't see much marked, uh, much uh, significant reduction in the complication rate. But uh, 
since uh, uh, July 2019, after posting one additional SR in the 229 SIP, we observed there is a marked a significant reduction in the complication rate from 8.02% to 2.93 median uh, complication rate of major life-threatening life complication. So uh, the outcome process was also, uh, we achieved the aim of reducing the major life-threatening complica complications like um, APS, PPS, and severe preeclampsia, eclampsia by doing this KY uh, project. And there was not much uh, um, significant effect on the maternal near miss and maternal death uh, uh, rate. And also there was uh, not a significant change in the referral data. It was as, uh, um, it was, uh, there was no uh, changes in the referral data. So we are successfully, we successfully completed our uh, uh, QI project, our, we achieved our aim, we, uh, we, are, we are able to reduce the complication rate and we are sustaining this very well till date. And um, anybody, anytime in the NC OPD can visit, uh, uh, our, who is visiting our OPD can see these uh, NC cards with the red and yellow stickers. And we celebrated our um, successful uh, journey. Dr. Mehtab, our mentor is there in one of the follow-up visits. So we are sustaining this and we are very happy and very proud to always, uh, hmm, wherever we got the opportunity to say, say that we are sustaining this project since, uh, since long, we feel very proud. So what impact we uh, had uh, on the healthcare services after completing this QI project? So because of early identification and initiation of manage, uh, early identification, we could initiate the management of high-risk pregnancy uh, early in the uh, OPD and could uh, man uh, manage to prevent some, uh, some of the potential uh, complications. It improved the triaging of the high-risk pregnancy at the time of admission in labor room. And uh, pre-identified high-risk pregnancies were attended, are attended, admitted, and managed on priority. And we uh, also involved uh, support staff, pregnant women and their relatives in the patient care. So this is, uh, I think this is one of the reason why this, uh, uh, this project is uh, still uh, uh, sustaining and successfully sus sustaining because of the involvement of all stakeholders, all the frontline workers in the you know, project. And the color coding of NC cards uh, help the, uh, helping the support staff to identify high-risk pregnancy in the waiting area. And in case of busy labor room, sometimes they go to the duty doctor and say that, uh, ma'am or sir, there is one of the high-risk pregnancy with red st sticker is sitting in the waiting area. So they are also helping in uh, triaging them. And pregnant women and their relatives are aware of their high-risk pregnancy status and are well prepared. They are not... Uh, uh, well, suddenly they are not at the time of delivery, they are not getting uh, uh, to know, okay, okay, we are high risk pregnancy, we have to arrange blood or this is a, a, some kind of, uh, uh, there may be some complications. So they are, since beginning, they are aware of their high risk pregnancy status and mentally prepared. It also helped us to redistribute the human resources according to priority area and in prevention of potential maternal complications and the Complications are uh, being managed and uh, timely and efficiently. Complications are still happening, but the preparedness towards the managing complication is better than before. So it has so many positive impacts and a simple uh, change idea of identifying and color coding the ANC card improved the patient care at so many different levels. And uh, we successfully published this uh, uh, QI project in BMJ's uh, second edition, Southeast Asia second edition. And this is the QR code for this uh, uh, QI article. Uh, Q, you can directly uh, scan this uh, QR code and di directly this will lead to access the, uh, access the uh, QI report directly or you can just Google it. It is uh, available uh, uh, free online and it's a uh, open access. So I will take a pause and uh, 
uh, and start again that this uh, conducting this QI project, uh, success, successfully completing this and sustaining this QI project till date was uh, a very exciting journey. And uh, we had some uh, uh, very motivating times and very de uh, demotivating times also. Similarly, while we tried to present this or publish this article, we had to do some extra efforts. And uh, the first thing what why I felt about writing a QI report is that, so I'm going to share what, uh, how we, uh, what difficulties we felt and how, from where we got support or how our challenges we overcome our challenges in publication in publishing this article. So the first, uh, uh, what I feel, the first thing is as a PG or as a uh, consultant, we are used to write research articles and research articles, uh, what we do in research article, we um, uh, try to implement one change idea or implement one intervention. We decide to implement that intervention for a fixed time or duration. And after that duration, we just see whether it had a positive impact or a negative impact and we compare the data before implementation and after, after, after implementation and it has only one intervention. But in uh, QI report, we have a problem and we have to achieve uh, a aim, uh, an aim and we have to solve that problem with multiple interventions. So, in QI report, why uh, there are multiple interventions, and with with all those interventions, we have to achieve aim. So this has to be reflecting in the QI report how we achieved our aim, how we uh, what intervention we did to achieve our aim. So uh, the it is it is definitely different from the research article writing. And initially, so as I said, this was my first successful QI project, but it, it is not my first successful QI report submission. My first submission got rejected because at that time I was not tuned to write a quality improvement report. I was in a frame of writing research article. And so it was uh, rightly rejected. So I, so I, suggest to go through the QI reports in BMJ Open Quality Journal, first edition, uh, second edition. It has so many good uh, quality improvement articles from the South, uh, uh, South Asia region and uh, also other quality improvement uh, reports in the BMJ Open Quality. And I would also suggest to go through the Square 20 guideline and the quality improvement report submission template available online to write the QI report. Each in, it is, this template is very good. It has all the directions, how to write your problem, how to write background, strategy, design, lessons, everything. And if you follow this square uh, 20 guideline template, you can easily write, the, uh, write your QI report. And there are many COP sessions on, uh, for the, prospective authors to how to write their QI report by Dr. Kiran Walsh and others, and it is available at NQC and COP uh, website. And also you can ask uh, mentoring support from NQ NQC. And as uh, uh, we got mentoring support from Dr. Mehtab sir in, our, in conducting uh, this QI project. So, and again, for the publication of this report. So uh, we, you can ask mentoring, uh, you can, uh, mental support from NQCN. And I would suggest to plan, if you are uh, planning to publish, and it is always good to publish the successful QI project, even the unsuccessful QI projects also. So uh, it, it has to be planned in the beginning. So go through the QI template, go through the uh, quality improvement project template uh, in the Pokey Learners Manual and do, start documenting all the details in that uh, template or uh, so that at the end you can you, you 
have the data, you have the records, all the documents available to write the report. And give utmost importance to the reviewers coming. Um, they gui guide us to revise our manuscript. And, um, and if suppose by chance, like in our case, our first QI report got, uh, QI report got rejected, but the comments uh, the reviewers gave us helped us to write the second one. And in uh, and uh, in this uh, second QI report, we had uh, got very uh, min minor revision and very uh, little changes we had to make. And because of first reverse comment and the second uh, uh, this um, uh, for this reviewer comments for this QI report, this uh, we su successfully could have could publish this article. So give uh, importance to the reviewers comment. And document the progress of QR projects and PDSS cycles. PDSS cycle description of the PDSS cycle is the most important uh, part of the QI report, I, uh, I must say. And uh, I will suggest to go through this uh, 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 the present uh, which I am presenting this QI project and uh, it has a very beautiful description of all the PDSS cycles. I have presented in a very short way, uh, but uh, it has a very good uh, uh, description of all PDSS cycles. So you can go through the uh, PDSS cycles mentioned in this QI project and collect your data weekly or monthly and try to uh, Initially, we collect data weekly in the intervention phase, and later on, a record depending on the data, like the how many uh, pre-identified pregnancy admitted in the labor room, we collected this data weekly. But reduction in the complication rate, we collected monthly. So accordingly, you have to collect your data weekly or monthly, and um, all the data, relevant data, because sometimes reviewers ask for other data also, like in our case, our primary outcome measure was the percent reduction in the complication rate. But in the review, the reviewer also asked for the data of maternal uh, near miss and maternal death. As we were collecting this data, uh, we provided them and they were very satisfied. So all relevant data we should uh, collect, uh, we should be collecting in the from the beginning itself. And it is always better to compile the data or in, uh, enter the data on the Excel sheet to have some idea of, about how to uh, work on the Excel sheets. And because once you en uh, once we enter the data in the Excel sheet, making a graph and everything becomes very easy. And uh, uh, if it is not possible to enter data very frequently on Excel sheet, we can customize forms like we did in our hospital. We had uh, different uh, forms to collect data on monthly basis. And at the end of six months, we uh, six months or three months or two months, initially at the uh, we used to enter the data in the Excel sheet and uh, we could see the result as making a run chart or making a graph is very easy on Excel. And data analysis, we have to, uh, to see our progress in the report. Data analysis very, is very important in and in the QI report, we need to analyze, visually analyze our data using run charts or, or time series chart. Um, and uh, in Q, uh, our research papers, we usually compare the data with percentage or uh, we uh, find out the p-value and other things. But in a quality improvement report, we use run chart and time series chart to analyze our data. And uh, always uh, try to publish uh, whatever your story is, whatever, whether it was a, a successful QI project or uh, uh, unsuccessful, because uh, if, uh, from the uh, failed QI projects also we learn. So try to publish and for publication, uh, all the tips I have given. Uh, and uh, Sir has announced the third edition of uh, BMJ South, uh, South Asia edition. So. Um, I will encourage all the prospective authors to start writing their QI reports. So, thank you. Last slide, last slide is just uh, to say 
thank you or it is not coming i don't know why and uh, i hope i i were i was able to convey my messages to all the participants and i am clear in what i intended to say thank you thank you so much uh, dr prabha in fact that was a fascinating journey which you took all of us uh, from right from 2018 and made us nostalgic as well uh, looking at those first sessions we held with the delhi teams in 2018 and uh, where you presented this project and we very vividly remember the interactions we had at that time and finally culminating into a great uh, bmj publication and today we have you and your entire team here Yep. Uh, coming up and speaking face to face about this journey in fact what a what a experience and i think this is what is ultimately what is required from the teams across india not only you know doing on ground work but also showcasing documenting and doing it in a scientific manner and for that uh, i'm sure we all require a mentor and um, though i am quite flattered uh, with the words and uh, definitely i would say that it the entire effort has been from dr mehtab singh and uh, your team in fact your hod ma'am and dr shalja is here and your entire you know on ground staff at the labor room who work and are still working three years sustenance data is something which means something so we are uh, pleased to have here the mentor himself i can see mehtab singh here so i would request uh, dr mehtab to please share his uh, experiences and uh, what has been the journey like was it uh, like a roller coaster or it was smooth like driving on a highway over to you mehtab uh, thank you so much vikram thank you so much and uh, really uh, uh, i'm happy to you know share my experiences you know doing mentoring in uh, such kind of you know uh, facility and thank you to uh, prabha and uh, selja ma'am uh, who were there always to you know uh, you know welcome me for any kind of you know time i you know uh, proposed to visit their hospital and it was wonderful but yes initially there were some hiccups and you know uh, uh, bottlenecks or hurdles when when we planned to you know carry on this project like administrative uh, approvals and other things and we all know those are part of our uh, you know system so we have to you know go through all those uh, so um, the, i still remember the day one when i was in uh, bmh and uh, because the pro project was planned during uh, the uh, quality improvement training in uh, lady harding uh, medical college if uh, you know all the participants uh, remember so i was from the day when i was very interested in this because you know this is one of the very important topic which uh, should be or you know i think i would i would say should be you know um, managed well at each and every hospital where our deliveries are happening but uh, you know uh, two three things which i felt during my first visit was uh, we had to give uh, and uh, prabha must be remembering that, that uh, we should you know involve each and every stakeholder first we should bring everyone uh, on board first before we you know ask them or request them for any help and in those uh, you know uh, even uh, patients and uh, patients relatives and you know our, uh, those uh, nursing orderlies were uh, uh, the part of that and we started involving involving them from the day one so that in future uh, and i was expecting that in future we might be needing them also so and everybody was you know happy to you know uh, to be uh, given the opportunity to you know share share the seat or the share the you know a place uh, during their meeting uh, you know qi meetings and uh, thankfully dr shelja uh, being uh, you know the head of the department could you know understand each and every uh, thing of that and uh, uh, later on uh, really we could you know uh take it further but uh, uh if i share a couple of points on uh, how a mentor should you know go and uh, see because i am getting an opportunity to you know speak with uh, so many my colleagues who, who are you know involved in mentoring now the first thing i would uh, say is to you know keep, you know have a habit of you know listening rather than you know speaking your own words every time we know uh, being a mentor we think we know uh, you know better than uh, the people who are working in that uh, hospital 
but the situation is otherwise. They are the real implementer and they know better than a mentor. So try to listen uh, as much as you can listen and then uh, uh, understand the situation and then uh, make them the team members you know speak uh, about their challenges or their you know uh, solutions. Even I would suggest not to give any uh, solutions from your side. Because if you are going to give your own solutions, it's not going to work there. Something which which is, uh, you know, identified by the team uh, contextually there uh, would work there in that situation. So uh, these are two, three things which I, and uh, Prabha rightly said, I encourage them to, you know, find out the indicators which they are already collecting in their hospital rather than uh, uh, going for new indicators. So, and luckily they were collecting all these data. So in each uh, of my visit, I would ask them uh, a little more about one more uh, indicator. Uh, do you, uh, and uh, Prabha, I think uh, she's smiling, she knows. Every time I would ask, uh, uh, Prabha, tell me, uh, are, are we collecting this kind of data also? Or do we have some uh, sort of uh, information on this also? And luckily they have all the informations and we, I don't remember we did have to you know collect uh, any new new indicator or new data uh, for that uh, method. Uh, so try to involve uh, or you know capture uh, indicators, it, uh, whether it's a process indicator or uh, uh, outcome indicator from the existing MIS system. What whatever indicators you have there, like you know, Prabhat uh, told at the end that uh, we were not able to you know. Uh, or uh, there was no change in the referral data or no uh, uh, in the, you know maternal mortality because maternal mortality we we are collecting but it's a very rare uh, rare uh, you know event in in any you know district hospital it might not happen for years so it might happen in a year uh, you know many times so it's a rare event and uh, referral because you know this was our balancing indicator, so we were keeping an eye whether uh, we are managing all these uh, complications rightly, or we are uh, you know uh, we have started shifting all uh, all those complications outside. So, but luckily it was all good. So that's uh, something which I uh, wanted to share. And uh, if specifically anybody wants to you know ask any question, then I would be happy to you know answer those also. But uh, there are two questions in the chat box. Yeah, so uh, Mehtab, I would just uh, read out the question for you. There's a question from our friend Mohammad Hassan. He says, who is the implementer of the QI project in the district level health facility, government or any other NGO or international NGO? So first take on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hassan, thanks for your you know, very relevant question, but because you know it's a government district hospital, so the implementing agency was purely, purely a government agency. They were all from government side. I was the only person who went there to you know uh, just do the mentoring for this work. So uh, the implementing agency was uh, all from government side, or uh, you know supported by uh, patients or patients' relatives themselves. So I, I, got, think, uh, I think you got that. Yeah, so, uh, so that's, uh, um, I think, clarification uh, Dr. Mehtab has already given to Hassan. Uh, there's another short question from him. A senior resident, a doctor or a consultant? I think Prabha would like to take that. You mentioned senior resident a couple of times. And to, yes, sir. So what so, is a senior resident? So a uh, senior resident, resident is a postgraduate uh, doctor, a postgraduate in gynae and ops who has done postgraduate uh, degree in gynae and ops. An undergraduate JR is the undergraduate doctor, MBBS degree holder. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, I would now have the privilege of inviting our former Joint Commissioner of Maternal Health, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, uh, Dr. Dinesh Baswal, sir. Dr. Baswal, sir, has been uh, the key driving force between behind the Lakshya initiative. And we all know Lakshya is the labor room quality improvement initiative, which is resulting in phenomenal improvement in uh, the quality of care in the maternity OTs and the labor room. And sir has also been instrumental in reducing uh, the nationwide maternal mortality rate significantly. And uh, we are on path to achieving the SDG 2030 goals. In fact, India is right on path. So Dr. Baswal, sir, what a privilege to have you back uh, on NQC and COP. Your observations about the impact of this paper, sir, and uh, regarding high-risk pregnancy identification in the labor room 
And uh, what sort of uh, generalizability, sir, you see from uh, what Prabha has presented in into the national program and other parts of the country in saving maternal life, sir, and then newborn lives as well? Over to you, sir. Thank you, Vikram, for inviting me. And I think uh, it was a very good presentation. And uh, I think uh, the government of India is quite uh, aware as well as, uh, you know, uh, concerned about the HR identification. Now, one of the things which I want to tell you that uh, I was quite, uh, you know, uh, basically amazed that, you know, she has still continued since 2008, 2019, and still it is continuing. Normally, uh, you know, uh, these things happen and the project period is over, then these uh, things, uh, you know, uh, get over. But uh, it's, uh, you know, kudos to uh, Dr. Prabha and team and Shalya that they are still working on it. And I think it's a, a matter of pride that, you know, they are still working on this project. Having said that, I think uh, the HRP is an area where we are still struggling, let me tell you. And I think this will be a good, uh, you know, also uh, since it is already a published paper now, and I think people need to access and um, more and more implementation needs to be done across the country because, uh, you know, some of the uh, uh, states which have high mortality states, I will say, like UP, Bihar, uh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Chhattisgarh, and, and Assam, they can borrow and learn from it. Uh, a huge amount of learning can happen. So also uh, during my time, we had also started this, uh, you know, PMSMA, which is uh, Pradhan Mantri Surakshil Matrit of Bihan, uh, giving an additional, uh, uh, you know, antenatal checkup of course, uh, ident the purpose was to identify risk pregnancy. And, uh, and you know, uh, another thing which is very, very important is that many times high-risk pregnancies are identified, but is lost into the system. We don't track it. And, uh, you know, it is uh, very, very heartening to see that, you know, you have a system, you know, in the OPD, how you categorize in the labor room, you, how you categorize uh, based on the sticker. And it becomes very easy for all the, you know, supporting staff to easily identify whether it's a severe uh, complication or it's a moderate complication. So I think uh, uh, it's a great work has been done. And uh, uh, basically, you know, now government of India has also extended the PMSMA program, which is, you know, where provider is given some amount of, uh, you know, incentive. Uh, also for the uh, beneficiary, also there is some incentive there. But uh, having said that, I think we, we need to understand that, you know, we have this 30 million pregnancies and 27 million births. So we are, you know, 30 million pregnancies you need to identify and you know majority of out of this uh, the normal thumb rule is 15 percent complication but then you know i think uh, in india you have more number of complications because uh, you know our uh, woman enters into the pregnancy uh, uh, with the with the already you know compromised uh, health so i think uh, and this is how, you know, what we are again now recommending preconception care, because, you know, many times, you know, we are, we are having a teenage pregnancy and, you know, and uh, some amount of uh, this preconception care has been implemented in Maharashtra, in, uh, in districts of Nasik, especially block in Sinnar and Pate, where, you know, uh, it, it has proved to be a very good uh, you know, and they have now scaled up. This is why with the support of the UNICEF, uh, which I started and, you know, we, now it is uh, being scaled up. So I think uh, a way to go, of course, uh, you know, very, very important. I think uh, this needs to be disseminated as, uh, as uh, uh, you know, aggressively so that, you know, people can, you know, learn from it, adapt and, you know, see that from where we, uh, you know, they can modified. So I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, this will go a long way in reducing maternal mortality and morbidity. Uh, of course, uh, another point which I want to say is that, you know, we also have supported uh, high dependency unit and obstetric ICU and given the amount of complications and 
and you know you need because these are uh, these are very you know young women which if you say save them so that's uh, very very important that you know in uh, in hospitals where there is a lot of uh, these and mortality can further be reduced if we you know move in the direction of establishing a high dependency unit and obstetric ic thank you thank you so much sir uh, very rightly said sir and we were witness to in fact we have been witness to the phenomenal change in the with the support of the infrastructure so with the building of the uh, countless mch blocks which have come up across the various facilities in the country in fact uh, another significant contribution during your tenure sir and uh, at the same time uh, i think we realize fully well that uh, the certification part and the improvement through the quality improvement initiatives which laksh undertakes a very important journey towards maintaining and sustaining and you very rightly mentioned sir and uh, uh, that three years sustaining uh, just shows the how the team is motivated and how it has become a part of the system and we have the head of the department madam also who's on a panel here with us and uh, it's coming from the top down to the grassroots level sir including the patient community so with this uh, i think it has phenomenal learning experience i'll call upon secretary and qc and dr praveen venkatgiri for his comments and conclusions we already passed the one hour mark so it's been a phenomenal discussion congratulations dr prabha and the team once more over to you praveen yeah good evening everyone and uh, congratulations uh, prabha and the team um so i uh, you know the important components of the quality uh, providing a safe um and uh, timely and efficient care so these three uh, aspects are very much evident uh, in the project that you've taken and you're continuing that um and uh, i agree with uh, dr baswal that like you know the, the every high load uh, low resource uh, 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 settings are struggling with the uh, prioritization and uh, triaging and uh, many of these learnings from your uh, uh, paper should be tried and tested in their own local areas and uh, you know many times they might see the benefit but they just need to document and see whether the improvement is happening we thank you so much for taking time out and like you know presenting in detail uh, regarding your project and uh, um, how to publish um and wish you all the best to continue uh, the same work and i thank metab for joining us as well um and uh, you know providing your inputs to mentors um uh, how we should be uh, kind of a careful in not putting our solutions but listening to the problems uh, as a priority um we thank uh, bmj our partners and unicef uh, for bringing out these uh, editions um and we look forward for more papers um and uh, we thank all our partners as well and of course our office komal rahul thank you so much thanks everyone for joining uh, and your feedback would key uh, would help us to improve further please do take time out time to uh, give us feedback thank you so much